we have reached the third and final part of my End of Ruby theory. I've already gone over how I think that Salem is pretty much guaranteed to win by the end of the Ruby series. With all the relics being removed from the vaults, it's only a matter of time before they're all brought together. Whether it's by Salem's hand or by someone else's, her overall goal is probably going to be achieved. And then, the gods will be resummoned, and it'll be up to whoever is there to give them the answer that they're hopefully looking for to avoid extinction. Because that's an option that's certainly going to be on the table. But what's going to happen after that? That is going to be the true end of the Ruby series. After the gods are summoned and they've gotten whatever answer it is that they are seeking, or really whatever answer is just given to them by who is there to greet them, well, there's so many different options for what could happen afterwards that this video is going to be a little bit of conjecture, because there is a lot that could happen simply depending on who is there to greet the gods. First and foremost, I don't think that the gods are going to stay and live among humanity and Faunus. I know that was an option that the God of Light told Ozma that it was either he would judge humanity positively and the gods would return and live amongst them again, or humanity would be judged negatively, in which case they would be wiped out. So, in other words, the God of Light was essentially saying you either get a happily ever after or a happy never again. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be something in the middle of that. Because happy never again would simply just be the extinction event. Happily ever after? Now, that one I don't necessarily think is going to be the case. As I mentioned in my video about how Ruby is going to face the gods and what her answer actually would be, essentially that she's going to tell the gods humanity does not need them anymore, that they were created to have the powers over creation, destruction, and to choose their own path, and they've evolved beyond the point of needing the gods. So, I think that's probably the path that will end up being taken. That the gods will end up leaving humanity to their own devices. Maybe a failed experiment in their mind, but humanity will be left to fend for themselves. Against everything else that's left at that point in time. Because if the gods do take off in that fashion, what is going to be left along with humanity? Because there's still the Grim, there's still going to be other criminals and enemies to face, and there could still possibly be Salem. Now, I believe that when the gods are resummoned, and when they eventually leave, that Salem and Ozma, as well as any residual magic, that being the Maidens, and anything else that might be spread around humanity, is going to be taken with them. Semblance and dust will remain because that is something that has become inherent to Remnant and entwined with the souls of the people, but it is possible that Ozma's mission could be over now that the relics are united, but Salem uh, still could be left behind. We're given the impression that her overall goal is to meet her own end by the god's hand so she can just move on to the afterlife and very likely to reunite with her daughters being her end goal, but her goal could be something else. And the gods realizing this could just strip her of her immortality and leave her behind. Perhaps she doesn't want to actually die after all and wants to recreate the world in her own image or something along those lines, which could mean that the final villain of the Ruby series could just be Salem, but without her immortality. Now she just won't be able to take hits like she used to, how, you know, Hazel was able to uh, beat her head in multiple times over and uh, she was able to regenerate. I don't think she'd be able to do that anymore and she could just be the final villain. Still very powerful, still able to control all of the Grimm that she was able to beforehand, just without the magic. I don't exactly know what that would mean for Salem herself, whether her personality would be swallowed by her own Grimm corruption, because I think her built-in immortality along with her magic might be preventing that side of things, and she might just become a mindless monster of sorts, and that would pose a pretty big threat to everyone. Essentially, the ultimate grim enemy 
in Salem herself, and that's what everyone needs to come together to fight against. But personally, I don't want to see Salem meet that kind of end. I want there to be some resolution to her overall character, because I've loved the way that she's been this conniving villain controlling everything from the shadows. This eternal villain that has been there since essentially the rise of humanity that we know now. A remainder of the first generation of humanity, I suppose. So, I don't think that that end is in store for Salem. That seems much more likely an end for Cinder, but I'll touch on that a little bit later as I want to discuss the kind of reverse option to this. Instead of leaving Salem behind to her own grim corruption and letting humanity face that, it could be possible that the God of Light will give humanity and Faunus their own little happily ever after, even after they have left, after the gods have left them to their own devices. And that being, it's possible that the God of Light could just wipe out all Grimm and then, well, they get their happily ever after. You know, a happy end for everyone in the Ruby series. I don't think that's going to be the end, but it is worth mentioning, since the Black Pools are already drying up from everything that we've seen in the Ruby series, and the Grimm are the main threat to humanity as it stands now. Of course, there's threats within humanity that threaten to destroy humanity in and of itself, the criminals, the murderers, etc., but it's possible that the God of Light might sympathize or respect the path that humanity itself has chosen up until this point, and would remove the Grimm as adversaries. The God of Darkness certainly wouldn't be happy about that, considering the Grimm are his own creations, but, you know, again, multiple different ways that this could go. I do not think that that's going to be the answer, and I don't think that would be a good ending for the Ruby series as a whole, that all Grimm are just wiped out, and humanity now just has no more threats. It would be nice, but it would also kind of, <laughs> well turn humanity on its head at that point, because their entire civilization, the way that their world works, seems to be pretty much built around the Huntsman Academies, and once that threat is removed, well, being a Huntsman doesn't really become that much of a good job prospect. Essentially, all of our characters would have gone through schools, the four years of combat school and the four years of university at the Huntsman Academy, only to graduate and have no job waiting for them. Could be a little bit of a metaphor for our own world in some sense, but let's hope it doesn't go that route. I think by the end of the Ruby series, the Grimm will still exist to some extent. Huntsmen and Huntresses will still be there. There will still be a threat to humanity, but not one as large as Salem, and there won't be the powerful objects such as the relics that could, uh, well, turn the balance in anyone's hide's favor, or, you know, allow one person to wreak havoc just uncontrollably using the Relic of Destruction, for example, or, you know, using the relics for uh, nefarious purposes, shall we say. What I do think will happen is that Salem and Ozma will go to the afterlife, the gods will leave the planet, and everyone left will be left to their own devices, against the Grimm, with their likely new master. Though, I think master is the uh, wrong word to use. I think their new alpha would probably be a better terminology. I think that Cinder will be left behind when the gods leave, and as the title of this video, or the thumbnail at least shows, Cinder, I think, will be the final villain in the Ruby series. That after Salem has moved on, Cinder, in her strive for power, her you know, allowing herself to have the grim arm attached to her, eventually that grim corruption will take her over, and unlike Salem, who had her immortality to counteract that, Cinder will simply become a corrupted monster, essentially. Her humanity will be lost, and she will become the final enemy of the Ruby series. It would be a question as well, if all magic is removed, would the Silver Eyes remain, and would Ruby be able to use that to counteract Cinder's Grim Corruption? But as I said previously, there are so many different possibilities that could happen after the gods leave, depending on what they leave behind with humanity. 
Now, I know a lot of people are uh, probably not going to be happy with the thought that Cinder is going to be the final enemy of the Ruby series. After everything we've gone through, um, I share your sentiment that I want to see Cinder taken out, you know, sooner rather than later. It would be very satisfying to see in Volume 10 when all of these characters that were transported to the other world get out of this other world, and then we see them face Cinder. And Cinder is impaled by three things at the same time, Jean's blade, Ruby's scythe, and Neo's parasol. It would be very satisfying to see all three of them just stab Cinder through the chest, and that would be, uh, well, that'd be the end of it. However, I don't think it's going to play out that way. There's going to be a lot of conflict, including conflict with Cinder, and I think there's going to be multiple different battles that take place, but by the end of it, I think she is still going to slink away and survive until she is the last one left. Her hunger for power is what's driving her. She was a very competent villain at the beginning of the Ruby series, but after losing to Ruby, after she had obtained the maiden powers, she thought she was invincible, had reached a level above the rest of the humans where no one could look down on her. And then one untrained child, Ruby Rose, took all of that away from her in an instant. And from that point in time, her mind kind of not only shifted, but I would say probably broke in that moment to some extent. And she just had this drive for more and more power, so no one could ever make her feel powerless ever again. And that is going to lead her to sacrifice her humanity for it and become this final villain, the embodiment of just blind rage and power. Hatred towards all of humanity, hatred towards the world, and I think that Cinder will be the final villain of the Ruby series. I can go into this in more detail in a separate video if you all are interested, so let me know down in the comments below, and overall, let me know what you think the final end of the Ruby series is going to be. We do need to remember that the Ruby series is inspired by a number of different fairy tales, including those of the Brothers Grimm, hence the name Grimm, the monsters that have been a threat to humanity for the entirety of the Ruby series. And actually, since before humanity was ever a thing, the God of Darkness created the Grimm first, and then the God of Darkness and God of Light came together to create humanity. I, It would be kind of, I guess, poetic in a way for the creation of humanity to outlive the creation of Grimm, the embodiments of destruction and these negative emotions that humanity harbors, but I think that they will always live in this duality, that the humans will fight against the Grimm and the Grimm embody the negative emotions of humans and fight against them in turn. And I think that is likely the way that the Ruby series is going to end, that this duality will continue but without the threat and influence of Salem, and without the influence of Ozpin or the gods themselves. This would also open up the possibility for a Ruby sequel, which I would be very interested in. Wouldn't be as grand of a scale, as likely, as, um, well, you know, having Salem and uh, Ozma and Magic and all of these things involved in the Ruby series might be something a little bit more smaller scale, or, again, potentially it could be something much larger scale as well. Because now we have other realms introduced as of the finale of Volume 8. A sequel to Ruby could take this to other worlds and we could start exploring numerous different other things, but... That's probably uh, getting into the realm of uh, certainly other videos and other topics, so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. How do you think the finale of the Ruby series will end up? What do you think is going to happen after the gods leave? What will they leave behind that humanity and the Faunus will still have to fight against? My thoughts is it's likely going to be Cinder, assuming she survives until that point. Again, would love it if she's taken out in a very satisfying way before that, but I think she will meet her end as the final villain remaining. And after that point, the Huntsman Academies will be able to be rebuilt, and the series will continue that way. Though, given that three out of the four Huntsman Academies have already been pretty much taken out of commission, 
It is also a distinct possibility that after Cinder is taken out, the black pools will dry up. Perhaps Cinder will use what's left of the black pools to make herself just that much more powerful. And once she's defeated, all of the Grimm are wiped out on top of that. So there's a number of different ways that this could end. And I would love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, got you thinking a bit more ahead into the future of the Ruby series. And if it did, and you want to see more like it, make sure to subscribe and join the Guild of the Eternal Flame. Tweet me at PhoenixKnight7, and I'll see you guys in the next video.